So I would tell you to just keep going. We've all had this or that happen in our life and then they all tell you, they all give you the same advice. Oh, take little steps, it's baby steps and all that. They're right though. If you can do that, if you can hit your knees and you can do, and take these little baby steps, you're gonna end up even way past what you thought you could do. It may come later in life. I, I can give myself an example. I often said I worked my way down the ladder of success because I, I crashed the gate doing 98. I mean, I got out and got in business when I was really young and had a lot of success because I worked really hard and I had guys around me that would follow in and work with me. And so I kind of shot right up. You know, I was doing way bigger jobs than I should have been doing at that age and had big credit lines at the bank, at the bonding company and all these things. And then when I found out how corrupt everything and how, and how good I was at playing that game, you know, when the first recession came around, kind of shut everybody down in our, in our world who was relying on federal funding. You mean in the EPA, HUD, housing, all these different places. I mean, we, were, we were just doing tons of work for these guys. Okay, so then I become extremely cynical. Oh, I saw all the other side, you know, not, not the good side. And wouldn't take any more risks because I was so cynical about what could happen going through that big of a financial break. Now later in life, it just seems like I can't really do anything wrong now. I've got a lot of really cool people around me. I don't, I wouldn't ask them for anything because they'd say yes. I mean, I, I've got guys that would put up millions if I asked them that they just say yes. And so there's more pressure than that than going and scrapping to get it, right? I've got a long roundabout message of where, where I'm going here. I had a good buddy that I used to play golf with, and the guy was like 6'7", 6'8", just a, a freak of an athlete. And, and he was a professional golfer at this particular time, did exhibitions, long drives, uh, stuff. His name's Corey. He was so wildly talented at all these things and didn't really know it, you know, self-esteem thing. Didn't understand how good he was. Kind of the opposite of the way I always felt. I always thought that I was way better than all my competition, but I never looked at it that way. I didn't look around and think, well, I'm better than Jimmy, Johnny, Joey, and, you know, if I would have sat down and thought about it, I, I would have thought that way. But anyhow, so I, I kept telling this guy, I said, no, 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 just keep playing. Don't, don't worry, just, just stay out there on, on the tour, on the mini, he was on a mini tour then. And I said, you'll, you'll win by an, you, you'll play bad and win one day. You'll win by accident. You're that good. You know, a year had gone by and he seemed kind of discouraged. He was out there. And then I get a call one day, he's in Florida. And he says, hey, Floyd. He said, guess what? And I said, well, you won. He said, he said, I did. I won. I won by like six shots. And he said, I didn't play very good either. So he broke through down there. This can happen to, to, to everybody and will happen if you stay. Sure won't happen if you don't stay, if you don't stay in the game and keep going. I mean, I, I look at like, I, I got grandkids that are college age now. One of them's a baseball player. It's a fantastic baseball player. And I told him, I said, well, just keep playing. You know, you're coming, you're coming back home for the summer and you'll play on the, on the Raptors, I'm, I'm assuming. And then just, just continue, to, continue to play. Local baseball legend from here, left-handed pitcher, Randy Meyer. I was sitting talking to him in the sauna. We'd, I'd sit in there and, and, and we'd BS, you know, uh, there for one season. We'd talk all the time. And he'd, he goes, says, Steve, he says, he says just keep playing until they pay you not to. And I love that line. Keep playing until they pay you not to. And he says, when they're going to cut somebody, don't, don't show up that day. Don't be around on those days. So that's kind of what I tell everybody. Keep going. What's the worst that can happen? You get a little bit better. Uh, somebody recognizes what you got. You break through one day. Things just start going. That's how it is. It doesn't always go pick textbook, picture perfect. You go from here, you go straight to a D1, you star there. It can. Sometimes those things drop right down too, though. So don't be in a hurry to get into the real world if you're in that world. That world will, will leave you quick enough. Who cares if you start your uh, career at 28? I, I know guys that, that played in the minors till 28, 29, and then went up. I mean, it's that way in every, in every sport. I get it, there's a shelf life for guys in, in any sport, you know, mixed martial arts, football, baseball. I get it, basketball. You can only play so long, <clears throat> you can't, 
you can't do like I do and at my age still play in the pros. But, well, we don't know. My wife says that I'm uh, always talking about myself. Yeah, but that's, that's the guy I know about. She says, like, it's always about you. And she doesn't mean it in a mean way, but, she, but if I think about it, I'm going, well, well, that's the guy's story I know. Who would I, who would I talk about? Twig Ziegler? Kenny Goodell? Shirley Cha-Cha Muldowney? I mean, that's who I, whose mistakes and whatever successes are, that's, that's the guy I know about. So teaching, you know, I, I've been a pretty good teacher my whole life. I've tried to keep everybody inside the curb. You know, the curbs on the road, you know, if there's no parked cars on the road and you got curbs on each side, don't hop the curb and drive up there and start plowing through everything. That's that's where the trouble starts. You don't have to just not do anything fun. That's that's nothing to do with that. I'm just talking about not having just total devastation every time you, every time you try to do something. You're equipped to deal with those and those are just like automatic for you how, to, how you deal with them. Those are Those are problems that are like, well, I'm going here, I'm going here. There's not a whole bunch of options, right? When that kind of bad news happens and then you have to dig your way out of it, those are the lessons we get. And sometimes they really aren't, aren't all bad. They're not. God gives you some of those obstacles to make you a better person, to make you rely on Him. For, for me, it always comes back to that same old uh, spot in the Bible in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, which essentially is, He will keep His foot on your throat for a while, and then he'll turn you loose, you'll be a different person. You'll come out of that mess restored, and you'll just be a better person. You'll, you'll come out of that thing, you know, ready to go. It just fits for everything. I don't know anybody that it wouldn't fit. Uh, it wouldn't fit their story.